Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a highly requested video, or question I should say, of how I divide my workouts, how I fit everything in, how I balance everything out. The major thing that I really want to touch on is that you're going to notice that I strength train a ton during the week. A lot of people have this misconception that I like don't touch dumbbells or weights or anything like that. I definitely do. You're going to see it in the video. But if you guys have any questions at all about what I do and how I do it, make sure to drop it below as well. But we're literally working out all week together. I'm going to be filming it. It's going to be my first time I've been like filming and editing as we go throughout the week. So Loki, I'm pretty excited to see if I can actually pull this off. And I'm hoping that I stay due diligent and I don't like do things like mess up and like forget my SD card or forget that I have a battery. You know, all those little stupid things that kind of like make a YouTube plan go all wonky. But before I babble on any more longer, let's get to workout. Let's get, let's just work out. Let's get this video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. Sunday, hold the fun day because we are doing cardio today. We started off on Stairmaster. We're doing 15 minutes in total, speed seven to nine. This can vary depending on how tired you get. Usually towards the end, I do try to bump it up a little bit, challenge myself. We are also not holding on the machine and we're trying to stay near the top. Reason being is when I find myself floating to the bottom, I just want to grip those handlebars and like just shimmy my way up. But we do want to keep our hands off those handles. Next up, we have the hit circuit. And now I know this is not very intense. I'm just getting back into hit, so bear with me. I would consider this one more of a beginner intermediate level. We're starting with EP bar, tuck sit to push up position, then moving on to DB thrusters. And then I actually didn't know what to call these, but I'm gonna call them steppers in and out jump squats because you're using a stepper. And we're gonna be doing P bar push ups. Now, as I get a little bit more advanced with my hit circuits, I'm gonna do another week of workouts where I show where it's a lot harder. This one was only for four rounds. And even though it wasn't super intense, believe me, my heart rate was still up and my shoulders were actually on fire not realizing that they were primarily three out of the four exercises so for this circuit pace yourself you do give yourself a 30 second rest as well i always work those into my hit circuits because if i'm just going 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 i just get really really winded and i'd rather be a steady person throughout my circuit than a hero to zero a very rare sighting of Little T Fitness, not only being on the treadmill, but actually looking like I'm running right now. So for this, we did 15 minutes on the treadmill. It was a interval of one minute walking and one minute jogging. Now I do call it a jog because my speed was only level seven and my walking speed was level three. I didn't want to go too big too fast and do like level 10 and then get really winded and then disappointed in myself if I had to stop early. Ideally in the future, we're trying to work towards obviously increasing the intensity here. So we would increase the speed as well as the incline and then also work to make that minute walk a lot shorter. So the rest periods are shorter. So we do more of like a 45 second and a minute or even a 30 second and a minute. And again, with that increased speed and incline, it's going to be a lot harder. Monday is push and pull. We're starting off with that because honestly if you try to do legs on a monday it is really hard because everyone's on all the machines we're going to be starting off with our warm-up first we're going to be doing three to five single arm scap raises my left side is significantly weaker than my right side as you can tell with the type of control i have and the height i'm getting in that raise we're then going to do three to five regular scap raises trying to pull as high as we can Following that, we're gonna be doing three to five skin the cats, trying to get as much range of motion as possible. This is also a great way to test your tightness in your chest and if you're becoming a little bit more imbalanced. If you find your skin the cats losing range of motion, that's definitely a signal to keep on working your mobility, especially because we are doing such high volume as you will see throughout the workout for push and pull. And then we're gonna finish off with 10 hollow body external rotations. I actually didn't have my long band with me today, so I had to use like a little like booty band. So if you're in a pinch, you can always use that as well. Time to get to to work we are starting off with four sets of max front lever holds in your most advanced position so for me that would be a straddle hold now because i'm only holding for two to three seconds max i actually end up doing an advanced tuck when i get fatigued and i feel like my position's loosening or my overall strength is gone so for me the advanced tuck is held for around three to five seconds or just as long as i can now for front levers, I know they're not looking very strong here, but this is probably the best I've actually had my front lever and the most consistent I've worked on it. So I'm really excited to see how these go in terms of competition prep. Following our front levers, we have my muscle ups. Now these are supposed to be as strict as possible. Clearly I do have a kip, please do not come for me. I am trying to get better at them. Now this bar that I'm doing them on, I absolutely hate because these bars are very uncomfortable. Just the over ang overall angle of the bars as well as the spacing in the middle just does not do it for me for a muscle up. But the other option was already taken and that option also sucks because it just shreds my hand because it has like the cheese grater grip. But anyways, I do try to work muscle ups at a commercial gym. It is kind of hard, but we are trying to go for four sets of three to 10. 
Here I only did four to five because honestly just the overall angle of these wasn't feeling amazing but I did want to make sure I did work them as much as I could and although I look like I'm kipping a lot I'm actively trying to think of not kipping. So we are a work in progress on this one. Weighted dips are up next and first we have to put on that belt and let me just say this was the hardest part of the workout right now. I don't understand why it took me so long to put this belt on but it was a struggle. This workout is a 15 minute EMOM, so every minute on the minute, completing 10 reps, and the remainder of that minute, you're getting a break. So for the first couple sets, all the way up until eight, I would say I was finishing within 20 to 25 seconds. So I had a nice long break, and then towards the end, the end it got a little spicier because we were finishing in 35 to 40 seconds. Now in terms of form here, we do wanna make sure that we are hitting parallel, so 90 degrees, because that's gonna count as a rep in competition, and then we're able to hit some type of protraction at the top. If you're not able to hit protraction at the top, the weight is probably too heavy or the rep range is too high, so you just wanna make sure for safety reasons, just to prevent any injuries, that you are hitting protraction. Up next, you're gonna see how incredibly imbalanced I am because for push, I was doing 10 reps. For pull, we are doing three reps for this 15 minute EMOM. So it's the exact same process as before, but now we're doing weighted pull-ups. And right now we're aiming for three. Honestly, these were very difficult and I was just barely getting my chin over the bar on that third rep. And these 15 minutes were the longest 15 minutes of my entire life. Ending off with one of my favorite movements, but also one of the most awkward to get into when you're working these solo, as you can tell, weighted push-ups. So this is gonna be just one set of eight to 15 weighted push-ups. Now, I don't know what happened with my counting here, but I totally thought I did 15 and I ended up only doing 12 when I rewatched this video back. But in my head, I was able to do 15. Although looking at this video, I think 12 would have been my quitting point because we were getting very fatigued. This was a very hard exercise. And honestly, I do wish my form was a little bit cleaner here. I wish I didn't have such an arch in my low back and that my chest was hitting the floor and that I didn't have my chin so tucked. We can only get better from here. But that was the full strength portion of the workout. Can't forget our core work. Now I consider this accessory work. This is gonna be 10 V snaps, 10 hollow body rockers, and it's going to be four sets. Now each set you're gonna be adding on 10 reps. Now let me tell you, this sounds very, you know, nonchalant, unassuming, but the amount of burn that this workout was for me, this had my core literally feeling like I was about to give up. This was way spicier than I was expecting. So if you guys want a good core challenge, give this one a try, comment below and let me know what you think. Tuesday and it's leg day and we also have a special guest. Yes, that is Maddie, AKA MDJ Fitness. We've been working out together on every Tuesday, kind of taking turns back and forth of who's programming. So today it was my turn to program for legs and we're starting off with four by four to six back squats. They are high bar back squats and we're working around 80% of our one rep max, trying to make the weight move as smooth as possible, but also challenging ourselves. PSA, the rest of this workout is actually just pure violence. We're continuing on with the Bulgarian lunge complex. This is gonna be three by 10 by 10 by 15. What this means is you're gonna start off with two weights, do 10 reps, drop one of the weights, do another 10 reps, drop the remaining weight, and so now you're at body weight, and do another 15 reps. That is a total of 45 reps per leg for a total of three sets which means we are doing 135 reps of Bulgarian lunges. That is a lot of Bulgarian lunges, and in general, most people don't like Bulgarian lunges. I do love them, however, this complex does have me questioning my sanity when I program this, and honestly, when you do finish it, you feel very accomplished, but during the time, it is probably one of the most like agonizing processes you will ever go through during a workout. It's a quad focused leg day, so you know there's gonna be leg extensions, but not just any leg extensions. We're gonna be doing a leg extension complex. So here it's gonna be three by 20 by 10 by 15. So we're gonna be doing 20 pulses at the top range, then 10 full range reps, and then we're gonna be doing 15 pulses at the bottom range. Now you're gonna then go from there and superset it with heel elevated goblet squats. These you always wanna keep a slight knee bend so that way the tension stays on the quads. This is a fun one to do with a partner because instead of doing 12 reps for the goblet squats, you can always mix it up and just make it so that the person has to do the squats until the other person is finished their leg extensions. Last but not least, we do have the glute focus portion of this workout, which will be the hip thrust. We're doing four by 10 full range motion reps, and then we're doing 15 pulses. A life hack if you are short like us is doing your hip thrust off risers. This is so much easier to get into your initial starting position than say something like a bench. For our feet position, we do wanna have our toes just slightly pointed out weight into our heels, and then we're squeezing our bum at the very top and then keeping our chin tucked and our core nice and tight to avoid any type of arching in our low back when we're dipping down with the weight. Now for grip, Maddie is overhand, I am underhand. That does not matter. It's whatever you feel the best with balancing the bar so that way you can just really focus on squeezing your glutes. 
Last but not least, I did want to mention that we are using a mat instead of a barbell pad. Now that is also up to you in preference, but honestly, if you are someone who uses a mat, I think you're basically a superhero because I tried it today and I'm someone who's used to a barbell pad. And I was like, whoa, this is different. This is definitely weight on my pelvis right now. Um, but regardless of that, we did get the workout done and that completes our leg day. Wednesday, which is an active recovery day for me, we did incline walking in the morning for 30 minutes. And then in the evening, we hit up open gym at Manjax in Oakville. This was two hours of training. And I'm not gonna lie, as we go through this, you guys are gonna tell through my commentary that this was not the best practice for me, but let's get it started. This was just the warm up portion. As you can see, everyone's starting to come in. We're all just warming up before we start throwing some fun tricks. So jumping into training, nothing is number specific here or sets or anything like that. It kind of just goes as everything feels. So if it feels good, we keep training. If it doesn't feel good, we kind of move on. This right here is just, again, kind of still a warm up because the gym is pretty busy. So some of the guys are on the bars, some of them are on the trampoline. Ty, Julian and I stay by the blocks and we kind of just did some back tucks off of the block and then kind of just helped each other out with some technique and everything. We then took our backflips to the floor. This is Ty, Zandy and I and Zandy got eliminated right away, but that's because he's just goofy all the time. He can stick his back tuck. It was me and Ty and he high key gave me a run for my money. He was sticking his back tucks and I was like, all right, pressure's on, gotta perform. Luckily I was able to win this one and then after this, cause it's kind of like, again, a little bit more of a warm up. We're about 30 minutes into this session now. Moving into some standing fulls, that first one there was not expecting that landing. I thought that was gonna be a soft mat. It was in fact not. So you guys saw my knee just buckle completely. We worked on these. We managed to kind of get them a little bit better. It's been about two weeks since I practiced them and I was surprised that I was able to land them on my feet on that hard mat, but I am going off of an air floor. Midway through the practice, I actually got to say hello to some people who actually knew who I was, which was always really nice. I love when people say hi. So if you guys ever see me in a public area, training or not training, always feel free to say hi. It's great just to get to chat, know you. And I actually got to set them up with Ty and he helped them learn some Webster technique. Back to the full training and this is honestly kind of where everything went downhill. Honestly, that red crash mat being on there for some reason, all of my fulls just felt really bad and I was trying to get my hips up. I was trying to rotate faster, but just like nothing was working, which is awfully frustrating, especially because I had gotten my full back and it was getting relatively consistent prior to this practice. Luckily, I have extremely talented and patient friends who are gonna take me through a bunch of progressions, which you guys will see. They were all trying to help me basically fix my hips and my back tuck. And unfortunately, regardless of their best efforts and me trying, it just was not working that day. So here we have Jackson working with me. He's trying to just give me some more gymnastics based drills in order to help me get my full in order to help me get my hips up but I still just wasn't getting it another thing that doesn't really help me with my full is that I literally twist with straight legs for so long and only bend them at the last second here we have Nick Nick helps me all the time at monkey vault he's literally one of the best people to learn from he's just so knowledgeable and so friggin talented so after a quick three attempts of trying cork, we realized it was just my twisting that was not gonna be it today. So we kind of had to break that down first. Flipping, I'm very comfortable with. Twisting, I'm honestly just not a twister. Even as a gymnast, was not a twister. I am someone who would rather do double backs, double layouts, than a double twist, just as simple as that. Here we're breaking down literally basic twisting technique from a tricker point of view. So Nick comes from a tricking background and often their twists are considered cheated because they think of it as almost like a branny and then completing the full. So the branny is the last half of the full twist. I fully can't explain it to you guys because honestly, I don't really understand it myself. I was taught with the gymnastics way, which was a little bit different. For this training session, honestly, my body just kept on getting very lost. So my mind would be in the mindset of a tricker technique, but my body would be performing the gymnastics technique. So I ended up getting really, really lost. And it's honestly quite scary to put yourself in the air, start twisting and thinking you're about to do something and have your body do something completely different. For those of you who aren't familiar with this term, it's called the twisties. And it's just not a good time. Any gymnast who knows the twisties knows that it's actually just like terrifying and honestly just very mentally tough to get out of that mind space because you go for a trick and you just don't really trust your body anymore. I know it wasn't exciting and I know it wasn't very crazy, but this is just literally what a training day looks like. So it wasn't great, but we're hoping Friday when I train again, it'll be better. Thursday and we're working some glutes and climbing. The reason why it's glutes only is because the gym was so busy, there was no other way I could do anything else. Now I know I say it's busy, yet here I am on a bench press, taking up a bench, doing hip thrusts. There was an empty bench behind me and when someone did come around to work in, we worked in together easily. I was able to do my hip thrust, he was able to do his bench press. So here we are doing four by 10 hip thrust followed by one by 15 pulses. And I won't really go too much into detail because I know I did that on the last leg day with Bulgarian lunge life hack you didn't know you needed. If you haven't seen it on TikTok, that is absolutely the easiest way 
to enter into your Bulgarian lunge. It basically guarantees the perfect stance and great balance when you do it. Now for this set of Bulgarian lunges, we are doing offset. We're doing 12 each leg, which means you're holding opposite arm to dumbbell. And in terms of tempo, you just wanna keep it nice and consistent between the two legs. Now I know my shoes, are my everyday lifestyle shoes, but we do change out of them. We go into Metcons because honestly, for leg day, you do need proper footwear, and these are not proper footwear. At least for me, I find they're too foamy. I don't have good balance. My ankle stability is very minimal. I do like a nice flat shoe when I'm working on my legs. Glute kick packs are next. We're doing three by 12, followed by 10 pulses. Now, quite honestly, I do not do these very often, so I'm low-key kind of self-conscious of my form here. I am trying to squeeze my glute as much as possible, keeping my core tight and really grounding through that heel so that way I'm not going too toe heavy and I'm making sure not to arch my back as that leg extends up. But sometimes I do find my low back gets a little tight, which is often why I just honestly don't do this exercise. But the gym was super busy, so we had to make do with what we had. We had a cable near us and we had my ankle straps with me as well. These ankle straps are honestly the friggin best. They have like Sherpa on the inside. So if you're someone who like me works in shorts a lot, it actually doesn't like scratch you or make you feel uncomfortable. It's nice and soft on your skin. So if you guys wanna check them out, they are by Suzy KB, love her. She's one of the OG influencers I used to follow when I first started my fitness page. So definitely really great products. They're also the ones that I use for my hip thrust pad as well. I don't have a discount code or anything like that. I just honestly really love her as a person and like supporting her brand. I know I said glutes and here I am doing hamstrings but let's be real to have nice glutes you need to have nice hamstrings so they go hand in hand honestly the gym was so busy and i did want to work more than just my glutes so when i saw this machine open i definitely jumped on it we're doing four by ten hamstring curls they are tempo so we're going down nice and slow for a three count and then up nice and fast on a one count i am doing around 50 pounds here but i did end up dropping to 40 because i found my form was getting a little bit you know on edge by that i mean i started to feel my hips peel away from the mat so you want to make sure that your pelvic bones are press directly in. Now you'll notice my chest is up. This is just a personal preference for me. I find I can get a better hamstring activation through this. I would be mindful if you do try to do this technique as well, that again, you're not arching your back, you're still keeping your core nice and tight to avoid any low back pain. Right after today's session, we actually are heading to the rock climbing gym. So one of the things that I wanted to do was make sure to do a proper cool down. So here I'm just stretching out the areas that just need a little bit more TLC, especially before I'm about to go one outside and then go inside and do some rock climbing. So we wanted to make sure we did a great cool down stretched everything out so i'd be the most ready for the rock climbing session because you guys know from my stories i'm super into it right now and i do want to make sure that each time i'm going i'm improving and i'm challenging myself now we're at the hub climbing here is ty and brandon on the wall julian and kevin and i are in the back we're all just starting to warm up we just all got here we tend to meet up once a week and we always love coming here because the walls are so challenging and it's just a fun experience and the overall community at this gym has been fantastic i'm recently new to rock climbing i just started about five weeks ago and let me tell you if you haven't tried bouldering you literally need to i find it's so amazing for so many reasons one it's a problem solving skill so it's like mentally challenging but two your grip strength your forearm strength your overall strength in your back it's just so so good and i've seen a huge difference now what i love about it here is i'm obviously clearly struggling with this one climb and it took me a while i think it probably took me about eight attempts but when you find a climb that you know is possible but you just gotta figure out how to do it. It's honestly the most fun. And that feeling of getting it is like no other. What I love about rock climbing as well is also just the friend group mentality of how hyped we are for each other and how we help each other out as well. So it's not only that we're encouraging each other, but we're actually helping each other learn and get used to different techniques. So Ty here on the wall is probably the veteran of the group. He climbs the most out of all of us and is definitely the coolest, most finessed climber out of all of us i strictly just muscle everything like i just i hike my leg up somewhere and i try to pull myself up sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so this was the climb that i was mentioning earlier that was giving me a hard time but we finally got it and what i mean by the community and what i love about it is that when i got this climb it wasn't only my friend group cheering me on but like everyone else who was kind of in the surrounding area who had watched me struggle and so when i finally got it it was like a whole crowd clapping and it's just such a great feeling so if you guys are looking for a new community or something new to try that you're gonna have endless the support definitely try rock climbing and go to the hub and mark them because it's one of the best Friday, we 
we have push and pull on the agenda plus some flips later on. We started off with 30 pull-ups and by we, I mean Bong and I, AKA Arnold. He's one of my close friends. You guys have probably seen him in my stories as well as one of the guys who helps me with my videos. So we usually work out with each other maybe once every week or every other week, depending. But we tend to always do push and pull just because that seems to line up with our schedules for some reason. So for this one, honestly, my lats were literally on fire because I had done climbing the day before and my lats were still sore from the back day that I did earlier because that weighted pull up really got me and those front levers had my rear delts on fire. Lat pull downs are next. Here we did one by 15. This is kind of a warm up, I would say priming set. So this one's gonna move a little bit faster, be a lot lighter weight. And then we're gonna follow that up by three by eight, which is a much heavier lat pull down. Now this is a styling that Bong always does. He is someone who loves volume. So we tend to do more volume on his specific workout days. But when I program, it's a little bit different. It's more of that calisthenic styling. But anyways, here we are doing a little bit of a heavy weight. So for my lightweight, I did around 50 pounds. For my heavy weight, I did 75 pounds. And for here, what you wanna focus on is driving those elbows down, keeping that chest puffed out. And you do wanna hook grip with those thumbs. You don't wanna have your thumbs beside, say your index finger. You wanna have a hooked around the bar just for it to transfer over to things like pull-ups, but also just for safety for your grip. DB single arm rows are next. We're doing four by eight to 10. This is gonna be a heavier weight. Now I just recently became a fan of straps. Before that I never really used them because I was just more focused on strengthening my grip strength, which is definitely important. I'm not gonna say it's not. So I would say if you're gonna use straps, kind of use them here and there, pick specific exercises. The exercises that you really wanna gain strength in are specific body parts per se. Straps are very beneficial. I can lift heavier, I can do the desired reps that I wanna do, and I don't have to worry about just my grip giving out. So say before at 50 pounds, if I wasn't using straps, I could really only do five reps and it started to slip out of my hands. Now with straps, I can do upwards of 65 pounds and it doesn't slip and it just feels comfortable and I can focus on that muscle contraction. For these DB rows that we're doing, it is more of a lower lat focus. So we are pulling to that lower hip and that elbow is going kind of not necessarily straight up, but more like straight backwards. So that way we can really squeeze that lat on that backwards pull. Three back exercises done. Now we're on to chest. As you can see, I'm super excited to hit chest. I do love my bench press. We are doing five by three and we are starting off with 145. Now for here, we are doing 145 for three reps. And last time I did, I could only do two reps. So here we are trying one more rep extra and it actually went pretty decent. I would say the track of the barbell, as you can see from the set, isn't perfect. I would like it to be a little cleaner, but as long as the weight was moving, that was the most important thing. Now, the other thing here too, is I'm moving a little bit fast. You do wanna pause the bottom slightly longer than I am, but that's gonna come with time as I get a little bit stronger. Next up, Bong had this crazy idea of doing 185 is just negatives. He's like, don't worry. This is gonna help your bench so much. Your next set will feel so much easier. Spoiler alert, I felt super hard the next set. But as you can tell, I just wanted to add this in so you guys could see what it looked like to have a spot in negative. So I'm going all the way down nice and slow and Bong is literally just picking that weight up for me. Although in that last rep, we did struggle a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Following bench, we are now on the machine. Here we're doing four by 15, 12, eight, six. So we are going down in reps, up in weight here. So I started off here at like 30 pounds and we went up to 40, then we went up to 50, and we all went up to 55 pounds for my last set at six. This was just a really great finisher. I do like machines because you don't have to worry about the stability point. You can just really focus on strength. So we did finish up here and then we're heading off to push-ups next, which you guys know I love. I love a good push-up. Push-ups are next. We are doing weighted push-ups. You guys saw this on my first calisthenics day. We are putting a 45 pound plate on my back and we're gonna be going for eight to 10 reps because this is at the end of a heavy chest day. So I was even pleased to just get 10. Bong decided to go superhero mode and put his feet on a stability ball and P-bars. This allowed for better depth and he also got better balance. For me, I knew I knew where I was at strength wise. I was like, let's just stay flat on the ground and just make sure we're going chest to floor and I will be more than happy. Time to get flippy. We are at Monkey Vault and this is located in the GTA. Here I'm just warming up my standing fulls by doing some quick big flip back tucks, hoping that that bent leg fast rotation will transfer into my standing full. Main goal of today was just to improve from Wednesday, which LOL wouldn't take much because Wednesday was bad. But all jokes aside, I really did feel a lot of improvement within the first three reps of trying my standing full. It felt like it had prior to Wednesday. I just had better spatial awareness and just overall felt really, really good about my reps and I knew I'd be able to do it on the floor. So what we do here when I am feeling good, I just make sure to rep out a couple good landing ones, really focus on what feels right. So for me, it's like, 
like almost setting my arms to the left the way I twist and then thinking knees to my shoulder and then just pull down as fast as possible as I'm coming down from that fall and that helps me land a lot better. Before moving to the floor, I always do one more on the mat just so I can really picture it in my head and then I chuck it on the floor. The first one's always a chuck. I don't know why. I always get nervous. But then after that, we can really break down the technique and then work on it a little bit better. Now, typically, like I said, I don't really have a set amount of reps or sets that I do for stuff like this. But today I did have a goal in mind that if I did bring it to the floor, I wanted to hit a minimum of five stuck. Happy to report we did at least like 15 stuck because I became obsessed and I was like, today I'm going to just drill this like no other. So overall, really happy with standing fulls. Rest of training was creating some content as well as just doing some of our other tricks. We all work on different things. As you can see, we take turns across the floor and my friends are super talented. We have Zandi, we have Julian, we have Ty, as well as Brandon. They're all super sick and they all have their own specialty and they're also just very, very talented. So make sure to give those guys a follow. <music> for a week of workouts this is my first time doing it so let me know what you guys think we worked out sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday that's six days out of the seven days we definitely do need a rest day on saturday which is today um to be honest though i probably am going to go to the gym today but i'm not going to film because technically i would give myself a full day off so i want to make sure this video is more realistic today's just kind of like a bonus workout it's kind of like a fun group workout that we're all doing um so it won't be too intense it's more so for the vibes well hopefully you guys did enjoy this video if you did make sure to like subscribe and comment if you have any questions at all about my training, how I approach it, how I fit everything in, because on top of like what we did this week, usually I do have Pilates and sometimes I try to squeeze in golf. Literally so many things to do during the week. But if you guys want to know anyone who's in the video, I've taken them all below with their Instagrams as well. But until then, I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.